So Rafa Benitez is set to leave Newcastle United. He will no longer be their manager after the 30th of June when his contract runs out. It's something that, God, Newcastle fans have been dreading. Uh, Kristen Hennig joins me now. And literally just before we started talking there, he, I was like, are you OK? And he's like, I'm a little bit gutted. Um, how, what was your first reaction? This is, he's literally gone about 25 minutes ago. Rafa Benitez isn't going to be a manager anymore. How are you feeling, Kristen? Uh, I think if I try and look at it from a perspective at least of a, a somewhat neutral, then I think it's just another chapter in the long book of sort of lies that have been spun to, to support us from the ownership, really. Yeah. Um, I've, strange enough, this is also something I said, I need to let you guys know that if you wanted to know this news very quickly... The guys at One Football would have had you covered. Sorry, Kristen. Uh, this video today is sponsored by the guys at One Football. And literally half an hour ago, um, Lewis Ambrose put up the uh, news story that Rafa Benitez had gone. Uh, the One Football app is, it is really good. <laughs> I know it's not the time, Kristen, you don't want to hear it, but it is a decent app. And you can find out these things uh, very quickly if you go and get it. There's a link in the description. So go check it out. Uh, we've spoken about One Football before, and it is a cracking app. Um, Maybe not many transfer um, news stories on Newcastle, uh, it would seem. But if you support other teams, then go check it out. Um, Kristen, let's read out this statement then. Uh, so it's literally just dropped on the Newcastle Twitter, socials, and obviously the website as well. Um, so they've said it is with disappointment that we announce manager Rafa Benitez uh, will leave Newcastle upon the expiry of his contract on the 30th of June 2019. We've worked hard to extend Rafa's contract over a significant period of time. However, it has not been and will not be possible to reach an agreement with Rafa and his representatives. Um, the rest of it goes on to say the rest of his coaching staff are going to go as well on the 30th of June. And now the process to appoint a successor uh, will now begin. Um, I was looking into this uh, as, as soon as it broke. And there was something in the Times actually t talking about how it looked like this was going to happen. But I think there was, always, there was always a dream that it could have been resolved because of the incredible relationship he seemed to, to have with the fans. And before you obviously found out this news, Kristen, did you think it was going to get resolved? No, I didn't, to be really? honest. Um, Why is that? Be because I think if we just go back to that statement for a second, it, mm. it's showered in disingenuous intentions. Um, the fact that it wasn't possible to agree an extension, the fact that they worked hard, I, I don't personally believe either of those things to be true. I think they very much set their markers in the ground early on and they were never really going to be satisfying to, to Benitez. Or in truth, I think any manager with a bit of aspiration or ambition behind them. Um, that's, that's the problem is that you can talk about Benitez's habit of politicking and playing the game when it comes to owners and trying to get more money out. In this instance, it was all about getting more money for the football club. It wasn't that he wanted more money himself. It was that he wanted the belief that the club was heading in a direction. Now, he tried to f facilitate that in a few different ways. He wanted more flexibility in the market in terms of not just how they spend, but the age of players they buy. Yeah, there's something about 24-year-olds, wasn't there? They didn't want to sign players over 24. Is that right? Yeah, the, the best example I can give for the lunacy of the policy is that in the same summer that Newcastle wanted 20 million for Dwight Gale, who was close to 30, they wouldn't pay 16 for Solomon Rondon. Um, that, for me, highlights the odd sort of double standard that is present at this football club that doesn't make any sense, to be mm. frank. It just doesn't. Whether you're a football fan, you work in football, or you're just a passerby, it doesn't make any sense. And at the same time, Benitez has also tried to push for improvements in infrastructure. Now, you can find examples of just how far behind Newcastle are with that now. The fact that, you know, they use paddling pools for uh, recovery. The fact that the training ground, outside of some cosmetic updates when Benitez first arrived, hasn't been improved. There was talk a few years ago of a big expansion, but it just never happened. And then you have this sort of sideshow of the potential takeover, which, again, is starting to feel eerily um, reminiscent of past takeover yeah. attempts in that it won't be complete. It won't go through. And it will have just been a delaying tactic so that there was no need to buy anyone, no time to spend money. And, and they can usher out those those disingenuous statements come August uh, 8th or 9th. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's something we can we can go into as well, because I think, 
you know, a couple of weeks ago, it, it, we were excited. Well, we were excited that this this could happen for Newcastle. They could, you know, it's a very quick makeover when that injection of cash comes in. Um, but now, again, uh, it does feel like that that false dawn of getting hopes up, and then ultimately it's down to keeping as much money to Mike Ashley as possible. Because I think that's that's one of the things that. Uh, from what I've read here is that the, the transfer, the flexibility over transfers is one thing. The second thing you would imagine he wants a decent contract and transfer funds to spend as well. That's the other thing. But when they talk about a significant period of time, it seems from some journalists that they're suggesting that there's been no, there's no movement on this contract offer since May 17th. I think it was Lee Ryder was saying that. He's a new uh, journalist in the, the North East. Um, and so, so there's been no wiggle room, it sounds, at all. For, and that seems incredible for someone who's as highly regarded as, as Rafa Benitez. Um, what's it? I don't know. I don't know. The only thing I can throw at maybe Mike Ashley is the fact that if he's trying to sell the club, you could suggest that him spending more, any more than he has to, is a bad idea. But then the other side of it is. Without Rafa Benitez, that's a much less appetising club to to go and buy, isn't it? What do you think is going on in in Mike Ashley's head here? I think he's as equally ignorant as he is arrogant. Um, I think he inherited a football club that he didn't do the due diligence on from a financial perspective, so was lumbered with debts and things that he wasn't expecting. And he took a club that had been, let's say, somewhat consistently in Europe, whether that be the Champions League in the late 90s and the early 2000s under Sir Bobby Robson or a little bit later on in, in what we now know as the Europa League and he's got them relegated twice and the reason he's got them relegated twice is because he thinks he knows better um, and the sort of cronies if you will that he has in his shadow think that they know better whether it's Dennis Wise sending Kevin Keegan a YouTube video of, of a midfielder to sign to appease agents or believing that Steve McLaren and £80 million will keep you in the Premier League comfortably. It's an ownership ruled and ruined, I should say, by the fact that they always think they know best. They Mm. think that it can be done cheaper, it can be done better, when in truth he could have sold that club yesterday if he really wanted to. He could have sold it last year. But it's the thing with Mike Ashley, we look at him as a businessman who was a billionaire and we think, wow, there must be some level of ambition there. It's not. It's greed. He's, he's emblematic of a major issue we actually have in society, which is he's a vulture on the high street. It really baffles me when you see the government bring him in to talk about how you save the high street, when all he's done really is pick the bones off companies that have failed elsewhere and then try to make a quick profit on that. And and that in turn is, is part of the reason he can't sell Newcastle is because he wants to keep things like the sponsorship. He wants his fingers in the retail. He, he has drained that club. He is absolutely a vampire on that club and he has sucked so much out of it, not just in terms of enjoyment and, and passion of supporters, but financial revenue streams. They, they've been crippled by his ownership. It's, it's possibly, in the modern era, it's possibly, I would say, the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Mm. And what, I think what's, what's scary is, is that, you know, life with Rafa Benitez, but that owner... Is, is one thing, but life without Rafa Benitez and whoever has to take over, that's that's another thing. A couple of reactions from journalists that, that we'll know of. Henry Winter saying, hugely damaging loss to NUFC. Rafa Benitez overachieved with such limited resources. Mike Ashley lets Newcastle fans down again. The club need Ashley leaving, not Benitez. And Keith Downey, uh, who's the North East reporter uh, for Sky Sports, he was saying, honestly thought the two would somehow find a resolution. So I'm shocked this has come today. Forget takeovers. Keeping Rafa was the most important thing for NUSC and they failed. Sadly, the Spaniard has proved to be too big a manager for NUSC under its current guise. And I think that's, that's a fair, fair point to make. Um, the last thing then is what now? What now for Newcastle? There's some odds on the, the next manager. A um, couple of, couple of um, jobs maybe for Rafa Benitez, uh, possibly the Spain job is apparently up for grabs and that might be one that he might go to. And that might be a, that would be a very different reason for him to, to leave. But it sounds like, you know, he, he wanted to stay. It's just not, he's not been given what he's been asked. Um, and a couple of, like, couple of rumours about Chelsea as well, but I think we'd be a bit surprised if that one happened. Um, but going into the Newcastle job, Whoever goes in now, Christian, it's going to be, it's a poison chalice, isn't it? To, to try and motivate that group of players after Rafa Benitez. It's going to be tough. 
without knowing who's going to get that job and, and trying to be as respectful as possible, it likely won't be a candidate who would have got it any other way. Um, that's the best way you can put it. It'll be someone like Alan Pardew who went from League One to the Premier League. It'll be someone surely, like Steve McLaren. Surely, surely they're not going to do that again, are they? No, I, I don't think it, it necessarily will be Pardew. Pardew. I, I would hope. Do you think he'd be brave enough to take it? I mean, you could theorise about that for hours. I, I, Alan Pardew is a man unto himself. I, I can't really predict his behaviour. But between him and Steve McLaren and, and Joe Kinnear, it's people that, to be frank, wouldn't have been in the Premier League otherwise. Yeah. That's, that's the problem, is that it's it's a group that, like I say, on merit, would never get that opportunity. Um, I've got some of the odds here in front of me then. So uh, some of the people linked with Newcastle job, Gary Monk, uh, Eddie Howe. Gary Monk, of course, just left Birmingham. Um under strange circumstances as well. Mikel Arteta, I don't think he'd touch it, would he? Uh, Gattuso, Mourinho, which I think that was the rumour that came out of the, the takeover bid, so that might be a part of it. But if you're going on the current current guys, as Keith Downey said, um, and the money that's going to be offered to this new manager, it's going to be it's going to be a, you know it's going to be a Gary Monk, isn't it? It's going to be someone in the same realm as Chris Hewton, who's obviously been there before. Paul, I've got to just saw Paul Gascoigne. I don't think that one's happening. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a very scary time for Newcastle fans, isn't it? What's your your final summing up of the, your feelings on this whole situation, then, Chris? Why would you take the job? Genuinely, what what would be the benefit to you? Because you know that the people who sign the checks are don't even aspire towards mediocrity. Mm. They're quite happy to take seventeenth every year as long as the Premier League check cashes. And I think any manager who would see that as an opportunity is perhaps not themselves heading towards greatness. So yeah. there's no chance Eddie Howe would leave Bournemouth for that. Mikel Arteta would never leave. Gary Monk might want to be back in the Premier League, but again, he's just left a situation where the owners were not conducive to the club's success. Yeah. So why would you want to drop yourself back in that and potentially damage your own reputation again? That's the other thing. In terms of the wider picture of everything, it's just disappointing because it's just wasting everybody's time. Um, I think of the supporters who are a little bit, little bit older. I think of my dad who's 71, who, you know, time is finite and all that sort of stuff. It's just wasting their time. It's mm. it's not, without wishing to sound too grandiose or even pretentious, it is. It, it's, it's just counting down the days and, and no one's benefiting from this. The few million that he's making, is it really worth it? Is it really going to make anything better for him it's I, I don't see how anyone is getting anything of note from this to be to be quite honest yeah absolutely and and you know if Rafa Benitez can't get what he wants at this football club then any of those managers that step into there they haven't got the, the credibility or the, the experience or the CV that he's got they're not going to get it either so again I think you're right whoever takes that job is either desperate or not not really fit for it um Incredible news that Rafa Benitez is no longer going to be the Newcastle manager. Uh, if you're a Newcastle fan or even if you're not, let me know your thoughts on, on this mess that is going on uh, at Newcastle. Um, Kristen uh, is a cracking writer, um, so go and check him out on Twitter, at K Um I'm sorry, sorry we have to talk like this, mate, but um, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the next few months um, hold for Newcastle United fans. Um, let us know your thoughts, as I said, subscribe to Ball Street and we'll see you soon.